When the Apostle Paul arrived in Athens in Acts 17 and observed on every hand the public displays of pagan idolatry, we're told that his spirit was provoked within him, and so he began to proclaim to the men of Athens in the marketplace and at the Areopagus the truth of the gospel. Last week, it came to my attention that Brandon Tatum, a conservative political commentator with a sizable social media following, was making public remarks against the Trinity, a cardinal doctrine and mainstay of the Christian religion. A day or so later, I heard that Brandon was live on his Instagram page and was throwing down the gauntlet, as it were, and challenging all comers to come on his program and engage him on this topic. Since I didn't have an Instagram account, I was resolved at first to simply listen to the discussions, and as I continued to do so, and I heard Mr. Tatum make claims that are patently false regarding what the original Greek actually says in John 1.1, or what this or that passage means when rightly exegeted, my spirit was provoked within me, and so I decided to sign up for Instagram in the hopes that I might get on the show and dialogue with him. In God's good providence, Mr. Tatum brought me on to his live stream, and we had a discussion. It was animated at points, but civil throughout. And although we sharply disagreed, I found Mr. Tatum to be an entirely likable individual, and I sincerely hope and pray for his conversion to the true and proper lordship of Jesus Christ. Indeed, Mr. Tatum, if you're listening to me, I want to extend to you my desire and openness to have further dialogue with you, whether publicly or privately. Just drop me a line on Instagram. Uh, for the rest of you, I hope that this conversation is edifying, and above all else, that it's glorifying to the Lord Jesus. The rest of this video contains that discussion. I think it's missing perhaps the first 30 seconds or so, and the last five or six or seven minutes. I'm not exactly sure. It was sent to me. Uh, this is basically the form in which I got it with the slight editing. Uh, I tried to keep everything in there that we could. Uh, there was probably some moments where uh, the audio cut out and there are some glitches, but for the most part, this is the discussion. I hope it's a blessing to you. God bless. To me, you don't know the language. I, I'm not trying to be offensive. It doesn't matter. I don't uh, need to know the language to know what the word Theo says. I, I, think, okay. I, I think I got a pretty good I'm asking is because you made the comment that because Theos is articular in the second clause and not articular in the second clause, therefore it's indefinite rather than definite. Well, there's the, the definite article of ho in front of Theos. That's right. In the first in, stanza. In, in the third clause, it says, kai theos ein halagos. And in that case, theos is a pre-verbal predicate nominative, which means not a god, but is referring to what the word is by nature. And so this doesn't collapse into the confusion that you're talking about, that it would render the word the father. And it also doesn't resort uh, or resolve to saying that the word is simply something other than or less than God. No, you, you're you referring to the third clause, right? You're not the second clause, but the third. Exactly. Do you, okay. do you know what a pre-verbal pre nominative is in Greek? No, I don't know what that is. Okay. Well, that's why I was saying it was apparent to me you didn't know the language. The language is emphatic in identifying the word as God. That's you you, 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 you're, you But you, you're, you're going to the third clause. The second clause is... Set, you agree that it's a different structure than the first clause, co correct? Uh, but it doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about. Well, in, yes, in the, it is. In, in the second clause, when it says ha theos, it's denominating a specific person, namely the father. In the third clause, when it's used as a preverbal predicate nominative, it's referring to the nature of the word, meaning the exactly. by nature, it, God. That's why, by the way, the article is not used in verse 6. If you look at John 1, 6, referring to the Father, it says theos without using the article. But you wouldn't say it doesn't mean that he's God. No, The word this theos is... in Greek means God. That's all that it means. I know. And so my, my you... suggestion, I, I just, I'm just, just let me say this at least. My suggestion to you is if you're going to try and argue against what has been Orthodox Christianity for 2,000 years, 
then I do think you should know the language or else simply I, listen to you, what those who do have competence. I, I do. Say. That's that's how I learned this is because I listen to scholars debate the subject. You just but, say but, it. But you, in haven't, second you, haven't mentioned, you haven't you, mentioned a single Greek grammarian that would agree with that translation. You, you mentioned just, Anthony Buzzard who is not a Greek grammarian. You, you, I listen, easily... listen, I, I have I have other people that I can I can present. I don't remember okay. their names. Name, I just watched name, the debates. Name, name one Greek grammarian for me. That well, I don't know their, I don't know their names, but I can refer well, to well, you. Well, I do. I do because I've studied Greek and that's why I'm telling you, I'm just cautioning you. No, you, you, you listen, here. listen, can you, can you, you are talking and you're saying things and then you're moving on. You, you just said in the third clause, I, it was not referring to, you said in the third clause, that it was referring to the, the the substance of the word. It's saying that the word is by nature what hotheos is. That's what that means. Yeah, yeah, he but is, see, he see, is see. exactly what <laughs> the father is. But okay, so this is where the argument comes in because some scholars believe that it should have been translated as a God because At, in no, the I, first... just, I just I just refuted that. You're going back to the point that I already corrected you on. It's a pre-verbal predicate nominative. There is no indefinite article in Greek. You don't say a God in the case of such clauses. No, okay, That's so simply not true. Well, let me ask you this. I don't think you can. I just follow said, that. I just no, 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 because you're talking over me. I said that there was a definite article before theos in the first stanza where God is used no, in the second one. stanza. You say second stanza, but the first time God is used in John 1 and 1, it was a definite article before the word theos. Yeah, because it's okay, denominating let me, let me, let me a let me specific finish. person. No, let the, me, article, the article in this case is denominating a specific person. In the third clause, in the third clause, which is the, the rest of the verse, you were telling the other caller to read the rest of the verse. The rest of the verse goes on to say that the word who was with God is himself by nature what God is. Okay, he no, is no. divine deity. That's what that I, means I, I, in Greek. You, you are saying exactly what I'm saying. I don't understand why you disagree with me. That, that is what you're saying. Because okay, you're, you're saying Jesus is not God. No, no, let me finish. Do you, no. think, do you think the word is a no, person? No, no, let me finish. You, you, said that there was a a, you said that there was a definite article before theos, meaning that it was referring to the God, that in, meaning a specific that, person, which, in, which in, is yeah, why it, they used the capital, which is why they argued that they used the capital letter G in the first in the first presence of God in John 1 and 1. That's why they capitalized it. The the cap the, it's it. capitalized in yeah. all standard translations in both clauses. No. That's, Do you think... Address this question. Do you think the word is a person in John 1 1? Is that a title for a person? Do I think the word is a person? No, I think that it's an inanimate object. That's why okay, John. So, so word why does word. John say, why does John go on to say he was in the beginning with God in the very here, next verse? Here is exactly where you have the translational issues because, and, and hear me out and, and, and give me some respect here. You, in the beginning, where it says, in the beginning was the word. John decided to use logos. Logos inherently does not refer to a person. Logos means word in the Greek is an inanimate object. So, okay. Well, okay, I heard you. Now, now hear me. Jesus is also called the vine, the branch, the door. Those are metaphors. They're titles for a person. Just because it refers to in, in other instances to impersonal things doesn't mean it's not being used as a title here. My question was, contextually, it goes on to say, he, the word, was in the beginning with God. It uses the masculine uh, demonstrative pronoun there. This one, Hutos, was in the beginning with God. Okay. So why does it call the word a he in the next clause? And you know, and you know this because you know the Greek. They, that could, that word he there in the Greek could be translated as this, and that's what some scholars believe it should have said. It, this is in the beginning. No, no, let me finish. Let me finish. Scholars okay, believe ahead. that it says that in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was. Some people say a God. And they believe that it should be translated, this was in the beginning with God. Some English versions of the translation said this, and they don't use the word he. When you go down, when you go down, and you go down in the scripture where they begin to use the word he, there are scholars that disagree because that Greek word can also mean it. Hey, am I well, right or am I wrong? Yeah, you're wrong because, <laughs> how am I wrong? pointed out, you okay. keep saying scholars, 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 but you couldn't give me one. I don't I'm know their person, names. I hear them debate. I hear well, them debate their, James White. Yeah, 
if, if you don't know their names, here's my point. There's only one person in the conversation who does know Greek. And so if you're going to contradict that, you simply have to bring a scholar. You haven't. Listen to what it says in the third, in the third verse. It goes on to say, all things became through him. Di altu egeneta. That is explicitly masculine. It's referring to a person, not an impersonal thing. In masculine 10, does not. It says he was in the world. It says he was in the world and the world was made through him, but the world did not recognize him. Clearly, it's referring to a person. In verse 12, no. it says, to all who received him, to them he gave the right to be called no. the children of God, to those who believe in his name. All these masculine pronouns point back to the word in John 1.1. 1, 1. Clearly, okay, the word I, is a person, and well, clearly you, the word is God. Now, you are making the argument that James White made. But here's the other side of that argument, which he I being know. no, 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 listen, to hear me out. Okay. I'll, okay. let you, I'll let you finish. Okay. You are making the argument of James White. I have heard James White rebut or talk to other scholars in debate, and this is the way that they articulate it, and they're both are, are reputable scholars, but people don't hear the other side of it because they believe one side. It says, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was, some people believe that it's a God. You just said that because it didn't have the definite article in the beginning, it was referring to a substantive uh, description of the word, not oh, necessarily that's, a person. Because no, that's said, not what I said. I didn't say anything. You, you about said it. About you said, it. Okay, I, I let, me, let me finish. About... Let me finish because it is described in the first stanza, or you could call it the second stanza, the first mention of the word God was hotheos, which the definite article is in front of, mean the God referring to a person, a identifiable God. Everywhere in the New Testament scripture, they capitalize and put a capital G because if it says Hotheos, it's meaning the God. That, there are other places that say Theos, hear me out, that say Theos, and that's the reason why they lowercase the letters G and God in many other scriptures. And that's some yep. of the contextual translation. Let me finish, let me finish, and then you can rebut me at the end. You, okay. and, and, and that's why scholars are saying that it should be translated, and I can show. I don't. I'm, it's on my phone, so I can show it. I wish I was on the thing, so I can show you the scripture. And all throughout, uh, and and, and I, I looked at this yesterday. It was scholars and reference points to in uh, the the uh, Catholic Encyclopedia and all of these different places where they translate it as a God. Now that has nothing to do with whether Jesus is God or not. That's a translational thing. You go down, and it says, it says. And he was God in the, he was he was God in the beginning. Now that word he can also mean this or it. In the in the description or the the rebuttal to James White, they said it should read this. This was in the beginning with God. Uh, this was this was with God in the beginning, meaning that this situation that's explained in the verses above through him. There are scholars that believe that this should be translated as it instead of him. Because the Greek word can also mean it or him or this. So they said, and, and this is a, a, a fair argument for anybody that studies the Greek know this. It says through it, all things were made. And this is why they believe it, because the word is an inanimate object. So if you're talking about an inanimate object, you can refer to it as it instead of refer to it as he. Unless you come in with the predisposition that the word is God. But if you read it the way it should read, is that it was the word, which is an inanimate object, logos, an inanimate object. Everywhere in the Bible, the word logos is used as an inanimate object. It says, through it, all things were made. Uh, without it, nothing was made that was made that had been made. In it was life, and the life was the light of all mankind, and the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. That's what that's what the scripture says, and this is why scholars disagree with this. And then, you know, because because when you uh, read it and you read you, it, you it, said a mouthful. Do I do I get to say anything here? Yeah, let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So that's I'm why they enumerating a lot of errors. So I, let, let me I, let me let me finish. Okay, go ahead. That's why scholars disagree because the context in John one and one is referring to the beginning of time in Genesis one, where it says, "In the beginning, God said, let there be light,' and it was so. God said this, and it was so." And so scholars believe that John was referring to the beginning. That's why he used the word word, which was little words that come out of God's mouth that manifested into light being produced in all of the above. The word of God 
It's consistently used. And then it says, and the word became flesh and dwelled. That, and, and, and to me, that's what I believe. And it seems to be more apparent that he's referring to an inanimate object, meaning that the word that God speaks, God spoke through Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus is called the word of God. That's why Jesus said, it's not my words, but the word of the father in me, I speak. That's the translation that I heard debated. And it, that makes more sense than trying to say, Jesus, John is actually talking about Jesus, but he never used the word Jesus. He should have used the word Jesus, if, but why he why didn't he use the word Jesus? Go ahead. Okay. So you said it makes a lot more sense, but only if you don't know Greek. Okay. In the Greek language, it's very clear that the word is a person saying that the word Word, logos, is ordinarily used for an impersonal or abstract thing, it has no relevance contextually where it's being used here for a person, and I'll tell you why. I have already pointed out that other terms that are otherwise abstract or impersonal, like vine, branch, door, are used as titles of Jesus. In fact, the word light is used for Jesus. It's used for God. God is light. That is an otherwise abstract or impersonal thing. But nobody would deny that in those contextually determined senses, it is referring to a person. The same thing is true of John 1. John 1 throughout uses personal pronouns and other indicators of the personhood of the word, and it emphatically identifies him as deity. So, for example, it says the word was with God, prostom theon. It uses a stative verb talking about someone who is in relationship towards another. It's clearly talking about a person. Now, I would say that in verse 2, when it says hutos, this one was in the beginning with God, the, the demonstrative pronoun this can sometimes be used for a, a neuter thing, it or what have you. Contextually, though, that can't be what this means, because in verse 3, as I pointed out, well, not only verse 1 is it used with the state of verb, a prostante on, the word was with God, right? There's not a, you know, it's not talking about some, abstract word existing alongside of a of a person it's talking about a person being with another person but in verse three it goes on to say di autu egeneta that must refer to a person it's referring to agency all things were created through him meaning the word verse 10 says the same thing he was in the world and though the world was made through him di autu egeneta uh, the world did not recognize him. It's referring to a person. In verse 12, it says that those who did receive him, he gave the right to be called children of God. It's still referring to a person. So when it says in verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. By the way, don't miss that he's said to be full of grace and truth. That's an echo of Exodus 33, where God says that he is full of grace and truth. It's clearly identifying Jesus as God. That's why verse 18 of the prologue goes on to say, no man has seen God at any time, but God, the one and only who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. He has exegeted or revealed him. That's okay. who the word is, who has always been with God. And one other okay. thing, because you, you said a mouthful, you wanted me to let you finish. You still misunderstood the points that I've been making about Greek grammar. Ha theos is not capitalized because it has the article. Theos is used repeatedly in scripture without the article in reference to the Father. That is just not an adequate ref uh, recollection or, excuse me, a reflection of what the Greek language is doing. Uh, and, and moreover, the, the, the phrase uh, theos can be used in a, a definite sense without it having the article. Again, Greek has no indefinite article. A lot has to do with syntactical word order in terms of determining whether it's definite or qualitative. And so I, I just don't think you know the Greek language. I don't think you should be, you know, saying things that just aren't true. The Christian church has believed these things for two millennia for good reason. This is what the scriptures teach. By the way, you also appeal to Genesis 1 to say, because God there speaks the world into existence, this is what John means when he refers to the word. But you easily miss the fact, I mean, I'm assuming uh, you've read it, but for whatever reason, the, the very chapter that you appeal to, Genesis 1, proves a plurality of persons in no, the it Godhead. Doesn't. No, it doesn't. in that very chapter, God says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And then what does it That's go on to say? 
and God made man in his image after his likeness. Absolutely, because the one God exists in a plurality of persons. You, you, so you, I have, you, you, I have you no me. problem, like you, accepting both the use of plural pronouns and the singular pronoun, whereas you, as a Unitarian, can only accept the fact that singular pronouns are used okay let, let me okay uh, let me let me let me let me touch on that because okay i think it's very i think it's very clear do you know that, do you know hebrew i mean I, listen, I'm, I'm gonna be i don't know greek i don't speak the language i just researched but, the greek where it, it is applicable and i researched the hebrew where it is applicable and i know well, i know well, that, we, i know those we saw things. that we saw that your observations don't apply in greek you, you were disagreeing now, with me you're saying what, that my observations what I'm don't show now is that your observations no, no. don't apply in, in reference to the hebrew no you the, the, the difference is between you and i is that you sound fancy which i which i agree but you are making a you disagree with me that don't make you right and, but, and, but, and but all you have in people, response is unnamed scholars. I've given you. You're saying you, you're saying unnamed. Argument. You're saying my response is unnamed scholars. You can say I don't know their names, but I can refer them to you and I can send them to you in the email. I'm not just watching something okay. out of the blue. Well, James well, now White let's, now let's debated talk about these Hebrews people. One. No, no, James now White. Uh, hear, hear, hear me out. James White. Re, James White, which you know of, most people know of. I know of him because he lived right here in Phoenix. He debated these people who are reputable scholars. He wouldn't have debated them if they were not reputable. He debated them. That, that's, just, that's just not true. I mean, well, they I'm have the same level of education as James White. They've written the same no. amount of books as James White. They, that, they are that's both not reputable. True. Well, I, I would say he's. I would say he's debated some reputable people, but just because he debated them doesn't mean they're, they're the ones competent. that I've seen. That doesn't mean they're competent in both Hebrew and Greek. The ones that I've seen that he debated, these people are competent. And they are just as scholarly as he is, and they debate these uh, issues. And well, you, you disagree, you disagree, but I, they, I gave they, the they go to school just like he does. I, I gave the reasons why I disagree. There was no rebuttal to them. But what were you going to say about Genesis one twenty six? No, because you said in Genesis one twenty six, you said God said. Now here, here's the problem that that people that believe in the Trinity do. You have to create all of these different words for God. I believe that God is very clear. The word God means God the Father in heaven. Now. When you get to Genesis 1 and 26, you may, I don't know if you believe in the Trinity or not, if you do, you got to create some weird word for God because you, it can't be God the Father there because God the Father, you know, he pretty much eliminates the so, entire Trinity. So let me, let me ask you a question in light of this, okay? Do you think that ancient Jews at the time of Christ understood the Hebrew language and had adequate concepts or terms to use to speak about God you're yeah. saying I have to in invent terms. Do you think that no, I, at that time, at that time, had adequate terms to talk about God and, and so yes. forth? I think okay. I think they did. Do you know how the ancient Jews interpreted Genesis one twenty six? So what you mean? I don't, I don't know what you're saying. What we actually have records of what Jews believed during the Second Temple period, which is the period contemporaneous with Christ. We have Targums, Aramaic interpretations, yeah. paraphrases. When were, when, were those, when, when were those written? They're, they're, well, they were used in the synagogues in first century Palestine. So they no, were no, 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 first century. What, what, year, what, year, what year are you referring to? Well, uh, the Second Temple period encompasses that period of time during which Jesus lived. The, the Targums are reflective of what was believed and taught by Jews throughout the throughout Palestine, as well as Babylon, places where they went during the dispersion. Our New Testament scriptures are, aren't even uh, dated back to, we, we can't even find the New Testament scriptures that are dated back to when Jesus was alive. We, we have we have Old Testament scriptures from before the time of Christ. No, Old Testament and I agree, I, but I, the New Testament... I'm talking, we, about, I'm talking about what pre-Christian Jews believed. I'm just asking you if you know how they interpreted those passages. But here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. You, you're saying there, I'm making it up, so this... Well, is I'm saying that there is no word, there is no, there is no word... Let me, let me explain this. There's nowhere in the Bible that any Jew, anyone, ever referred to God as a person. Or persons. Nobody, the, no the, ever in the, the scripture. Of course, uh, I mean the, it uses the Greek term uh, prosopon. Uh, uses uh, the the verb for God's face or presence. That's the equivalent for person. But it doesn't even it, no, it's, it's irrelevant. It's irrelevant because all you're admitting now is uh, 
those terms then aren't used for people either. And clearly you and I agree that the term has application to you and I. You're a person, I'm a person. But no, 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 but that's not the same. That's not the same as the Trinity. The Bible, then it's irrelevant to No, say that's not the, the same God. as the Trinity because because so, in the Trinity what is your answer to Genesis 126? I think we're well, I'm, I'm saying I'm saying there's here because because there's a few different theologies that, that surround Genesis 126. Trinitarians believe that that God, I guess I don't know give, which one, give, give was, me your let, position. Me finish, let me finish. That God was talking to two other people. And then God left those two people out when he created, when it says God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. But then it goes on to say that God made man after his own image and his likeness. So if you think that God is the Father speaking, then the Father left out the Son and the Holy Spirit um, in the next stanza. So there are so, scholars who believe. Let me no, finish. you're not. You're not accounting for both passages. You have to exclude one and hold to the other. No, I'm I don't. I'm you, saying that. Both. Let me finish. God let me finish. said, "Let us make." He uses the cohortative. Who is God? What's the definition of God? He's the Trinity, address, the Creator, the one who's addressing two other persons who, who, if they are Creator alike, can be called God. <laughs> you're giving me you could shake your head but who's he talking to yeah, well there's a th there if you if you will open your mind and i'm not saying that you i don't want to be disrespectful well, but my mind's I think it, open me, start filling it i'm just okay. asking you to tell me what it means i'm, I'm telling you i'm telling you because because there are there are different theories I out here you like animated discussion by the way i'm not being up no, with you me, 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 I, I think i, I think you, i think you're doing a good job i think you're not being disrespectful you standing your ground but I, what i'm saying is that when you look at genesis 126 there are people who would argue that Jesus is talking to, and it's two different theologies that I think makes more sense here, is that Jesus could be talking to the angels or Jesus could be talking and speaking of his deity. And, wait, and Jesus, wait, Jesus, Jesus was talking gonna, there? Not Jesus, I'm saying uh, We're all on the same page, baby. Nah, man, you know, you, you know I just said Jesus because we've been running our mouth about it. But I, uh, I believe that God, that there, is, there is people out here who will argue, and I, and I think it makes more sense, that God is referring to his majesty, the plurality of his majesty, which is, okay. which is let, me, let me finish, because in the New Testament, when kings um, used to refer to themselves, they would say we, they were referring to one person, but they were speaking the plurality of majesty. The word um, Elohim is a plural word, right? So when, when, when it says Elohim, God, said, let us make man in our own image. Some people believe that that's what it is. Therefore, the next scripture, when it says God made man in his own image after his likeness, it's consistent that God is not talking about other persons. He's speaking of the plurality of his majesty. Therefore, he can create by himself. Then there's other people that believe then, you know, that God was speaking to the angels and then he created. Nobody, okay. I don't think, I don't think it's reasonable to believe there's two different persons because what person is speaking? Is it the father or the son or the Holy Spirit? Which person is speaking? Okay. Several things there. Number one, you claim that it could be a plural of majesty. No Hebrew grammarian would say that there is such a thing as a plural of majesty with respect. Well, to the that's verb. what, that's no, what, let me, let me that's speak. what I'm David K. You. Bernard, David K. No. Bernard, who, who is a, is a reputable scholar of the uh the pentecostal faith had a debate with james white and james and, and uh david k bernard mentioned the word the plurality of majesty that was his hey, argument he's a scholar all, just like james white first of all first of all let me finish now david k bernard as a oneness pentecostal if i'm not mistaken would hold to a proleptic understanding that god was speaking with a view towards the future sonship that was that was going to be uh, I'm just I'm just telling you, know, I, I'm well familiar with David Bernard, Robert Sabin, Nathaniel Urshan, other oneness Pentecostals. I'm, I'm not, you know, a new kid on the block. Saying so, though, doesn't make it so. OK, what I'm telling you is there's no Hebrew grammarian. David K. Bernard is not a Hebrew grammarian, just for the record. OK, if you're and looking at James Hebrew, White, is he? if you're looking at Hebrew grammarians, you're talking about people like uh, Gesanius, the father of all Hebrew lexicons. Uh, you know, you're looking at people like Emil Rodiger. These are the people who are the grammarians that people like David Bernard have to turn to in order to buttress their claim. Now, I'm just being, I'm telling you the, the facts. David K. Bernard wouldn't disagree with me here. These what? are the scholars that everybody has to look to and, and talk, you know, if we're going to talk about what reputable scholars are. The fact is, and I can prove it to you. I, I agree with you. The, you're the using fact them, I'm is, using them. There's no such thing as a plural of majesty in Hebrew with respect to verbs and pronouns. Go look at 
uh, Emil Rodiger, Gesanius, uh, 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 Gerhard Hazel, an Old Testament scholar, uh, Taylor Lewis, an Old Testament scholar, they all tell you there's no such thing as a plural of majesty with respect to verbs and pronouns. I'm not talking about the word Elohim here. I'm talking about the verb, let us make, and uh, <laughs> other expressions that are used in the Old Testament. The phrase, let us make, that's a single word in Hebrew, a verb, and it uses the plural. That's never used as a plural of majesty. That's why you couldn't possibly give me, you said it's found throughout the Old Testament, kings speak this way. You couldn't give me a single example of a king speaking that way in the Old Testament. I can, I it can, never I happens. can. Okay, I can. go ahead. Well, no, I don't have it on hand, but I can okay. refer to so it. For the sake I of can get it and give it to you. For the sake of this conversation, you can't. Okay. Now, just yeah, I mean, of course. So I'm, 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 I'm spontaneous. I'm, I'm off the cuff. Okay. I can, I can well, look I'm it up. Spontaneous too. Me. Let's be spontaneous. Now, with respect okay. to angels, God, uh, if God was addressing the angels, do you believe the angels were co-creators with God, or was God well, just is, speaking to the air? Well, no, I, I don't. I don't tend to believe in the angel argument. I believe in God in the plurality of Majesty. That's why they call. Okay. That's why so God you is believe, referred to as Elohim. In a non-existent Hebrew category of grammar. That just isn't true. It's not. Well, Elohim is the plural. Is, isn't Elohim plural? But it's not the word Elohim I'm talking about. It, the, you know what it I'm said, saying? God that... said, Elohim said, but then what he said was, let us make. Now, I say in Hebrew is a verb, and it uses the plural. And it's never used as a plural of majesty. God was clearly speaking to other persons and calling upon them to join in the creative work. Moreover, do you believe that man was, uh, when we say that, why do we uh, imitate God? Why do we worship him? What do you think, what is man? What, what is so, man? Uh, you could now hear, but here's a, here, here, let, let me say this, and then I'm going to jump to what is man. Well, well, you, you're jumping here because you said that the God the Father said, let us make man. That makes the Holy Spirit um, just as involved in creation as Jesus. And in, in, and in John, it says everything was made by Jesus, not the Holy it Spirit. Says, it says, first of all, Scripture says everything was made by God, through God, and uh, in God. Romans 11, 36. It uses various prepositions, by, through, and in. The Old Testament is explicit. God the, the Father Spirit, or God the Son? The, the, the Bible is explicit, if you want to go by the Bible, that the Spirit created. In Psalm 104, 30, it says, you send forth your Spirit, and they are created. In Job 33, Job said, the Spirit of God has made me. The breath of the Almighty gives me life. The Spirit is clearly portrayed as a person who is acting no. in creation. Yeah, no, I, I think that's no, no. It says, well, this is this is this is what I believe about the spirit. The spirit is not separate, a per separate person from God the Father. God breathed. So, the so word why breathed. does Scripture say repeatedly God sent forth His Spirit? If God is His Spirit, is He sending forth Himself? Yeah, He's sending he came forth. Out of one is Pentecostalism. No, 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 no. Me this a modalistic is, view. That's not true because God was in Christ Jesus. Listen, the Bible says God was in Christ Jesus, working reconciling the world unto himself. The Father was in Christ Jesus. Do you agree to that? Did the Father send the Son? Of course I Integration between the so, members of the Trinity. Okay. But there is personal distinction. That's why Scripture can say the Son was sent by... Son. Did the, the Father die on the cross? The Father or the Son? Did the That's Father why, die on the cross? Uh, no, the Son did. There's a no, no, no. You said they're, they're, the they're, they're not. They're not. They're not separated. So the fullness of the Godhead is I, in Christ. I said, I said they're personally distinct. I didn't say they're essentially distinct. They share the same nature. Where's that in the Bible? John one one. The passage we were already talking. Where's about the Holy before. Spirit? You, you can say you can say that John and Father and the Son is there in John one one. But where's the Holy Spirit in John one one? You don't think you don't think John one one is the only passage in the Bible, do you? No, no. Let's go send me another one that says that they are three co-equal or three well, personal. The, the way you establish doctrine in the Bible is not by isolating one text and saying it's. I think that's everything. what. I think you that's have what to look we're doing. The entirety of God's revelation and accept the totality of it. So, for example, my methodology uh, demonstrated earlier, where I accept 126 and 127 of Genesis, but where you accept 127, but not 127. No, I, was, I, was, I accept it all. No, you, you, you would have to reject it because the no. singular pronoun in 27. Uh, in your mind, justifies rejecting the plural pronouns in verse 26. No, that's not true. But, well, I, I think we saw that already, but. 
But the, the, the scriptures are just as clear that the Spirit is God and a divine person as they are that Christ Where does this is say the Spirit is a divine person in the Bible? Well, the, the same evidence that proves the Father and Son are persons. You already, you are here. here. Mark 1, the Father says, you are my beloved Son in whom I'm well pleased. So the Father calls uh, the Son my Son. He uses the pronoun my for himself, right? Well, I don't, I, this is, this is, this is the, the way I believe on, it. Because, this is easy. This is well, easy. God don't have a mouth. God don't have a mouth. So I that, believe Why are you that, talking about mouths? That's irrelevant. Is that, hey, not, you're, saying, you're saying, that. let me, let me explain. I believe that God, uh, when people say God spoke to them, what language does God speak? God don't speak a language. You, you allow to hear the voice that you interpret as God. So when he said, my son in whom I'm well pleased, I, clearly hey, God hey, is with not. All, with all due respect, I think you've been talking too long tonight. <laughs> I'm not talking about whether God has a physical mouth. We're talking about whether he's a personal being from himself. Yeah, right? I, think that, I, think that, I think that God is a spirit. Okay, so and that's, 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 what what I, that's what I mean. That's what I mean by saying that the father's a person. I'm not saying he, he has a mouth. I'm not saying he has ears or a shin. But is you he know, a separate not, person from the son? I'm saying that God has a shin and, and all the rest. Um, is he a separate person from the son? He's a distinct person from the son, of course. So he has his own. The so they have two different. They have two different minds. It, they, they are two distinct persons who both exercise the divine mind. They're essentially one. But they have one mind. They have let's two follow, minds. Let's 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 follow the point. We were talking about the spirit. You got sidetracked when we were talking about the spirit being a distinct divine person talking about whether god has a mouth or not which is not what i'm talking about the spirit the spirit just like the father and the son speaks in scripture in acts chapter 13 the spirit said set apart for me barnabas and saul for the work to which i have called them so the spirit just like the father and the son speaks as a person well i, di I disagree i disagree well, how do you disagree with that that was well, acts 13, no, when people... right there in the bible no, because the spirit of God is God. So when, when people refer to the spirit of God, that's God speaking. I, the so, God the Father speaking. Let me, so let me clarify. So scripture says that God sent the spirit, that the son sent the spirit, that means that the spirit just is the father. He's not somebody distinct from and sent by the father. No, because, because okay, the, no, father, no, the gonna, father in I'm heaven. I'm going to, for argument's sake, accept that. So if, if the Father sending the Spirit means the Spirit just is the Father, then do you believe Jesus is the Father? Because the Bible also says the Father sent Jesus. No, so this is, this is how I believe it's very simple. God is That's a Spirit. It's not very simple. You're, you're equivocating on the term. God, God is the Spirit. Spirit. Here, here the Spirit being sent by the Father just means he is the Father and not a distinct person who can be sent by him, then you have to accept the force of your own logic and say the son is is the father because the father sent the son too, which in your nope. language just means the same person. Well, no, because there's other scriptures that identified it, right? Because here's the here's the thing that the father in heaven is God. God is a spirit. People refer to God's spirit as God in action and power, like God breathed life into man. The word breathe in the Hebrew can also be crazy. Oh no, are we going back to Hebrew? I, I, okay, I I'm, just saying, I'm just I'm going for the whole scripture. Like we got, it's the whole thing. Like so, in the beginning, when the spirit of God hovered over the water, I mean, it, it, it's not, it didn't say it was another person. It's that God's power is referred to by many as God's spirit. And so, in the in the when it says that the Father was in Christ Jesus, when it says that God's spirit was in Christ Jesus, that's that's the Father being in Christ, reconciling so the world to Himself. So what we're disagreeing on is whether the Spirit is a person distinct from the Father. The passage I just gave you in Acts 13, English, and it's just as clear in the Greek. The same Spirit is said to be sent by the Father. In Galatians 4, for example, 
it says, when the fullness of the time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, made under the law, to redeem those who were under the law. And then it says, he sent forth the spirit into our hearts, whereby we cry out, Abba, Father. So the same text that distinguishes Christ from the Father by saying he was sent forth, also goes on to distinguish the Spirit from both the Father and the Son by speaking of Him being sent forth. So that's three. So you have to accept God. the entirety of Scripture. Is this that is three why, God? This is why the baptismal formula, the in. Uh, inductor, uh, the right of induction into the Christian fold is baptism into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. It very clearly distinguishes between the persons, and by making this the introductory right of Christianity, establishes establishes this as foundational to the Christian okay. faith. Okay, let me let me say this. And, and show me a scripture in the whole entire Bible where somebody baptized someone in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Show me a scripture. Well, in, in the first place, you're assuming that we have recorded instances of what was pronounced by the baptizers over the baptizing. John, John in, in, in Acts, in Acts, he said, uh, in, in the book of Acts, he said, you shall be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Also, I, there's I, only I one name. Of above you, just, you just misrepresented some things there. In the first place, it wasn't John. I think you're referring to Peter. No, I didn't say John. Peter. I mean, I meant in Acts, Peter. Okay, so that was the first thing. But the, the more important thing is, it's not recording what was spoken over the person as he was being baptized. He's okay. issuing a command. Be <laughs> baptized in the name of Jesus always been for 2,000 years into the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Nobody has ever even used that phrase anywhere. Nobody has used the phrase Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to even pray for anybody ever in the Scripture. The only place in the Scripture where the word Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is even referenced like that is in one place in the whole entire 66 book, and that's in uh, Matthew that's, that's, controversial, that's a controversial scripture. That's not true. And it's found in every Greek manuscript, so there's nothing controversial about well, it. It's, no, it's because, there, no, that's it's the, well, there, and the grammar, and the grammar is impeccable. It's easy to translate. No, because, no, well, I disagree I disagree with you, and I've heard the argument on the other side. That What's said the that, argument, then? We want to go that it, that original That the original text read um, that, Go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in my name. That's why. It, it, tell me a single manuscript that lacks the baptismal formula in all standard translations. I can assure you, you won't find one. There is no such thing. Well, this it, is it, pure it, cultic it, fiction. There, this is a. Well, so why did a, anybody do what, what Jesus told them to do? Ten days later, Paul. You're, you're, later, you're assuming. Peter, you're assuming that we have recorded right. instances of what was pronounced over people at the time of baptism. You're confusing this is, the the issuing of a command by the apostles to people to be baptized with what was actually spoken when people were baptized. We have no recorded instance of a yeah, formula do. being pronounced. No, it, says when they, it says calling on the name of Jesus when they were baptized. Let me see. So wait, is that what the person spoke or is that what the person being baptized was doing? No, 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 no. They, they, they told him to be baptized calling on the name of Jesus. So who's, calling call on the name? Jesus. who's calling the, on the name? The person doing the baptism. No, the person being baptized. No, they're not. You're, no, you're not reading very carefully the Bible. When Jesus was speaking to the apostles, he was telling them what to say when baptizing. What you're talking about is what the person being baptized is doing while being baptized, calling I, I, upon I, the name of the Lord. So you're confusing the baptizer, the actor, and the person being acted upon. That's why you're ending up with these colossally bad interpretations that go against that's, 2,000 that's, years' worth of historic that's not true. Christian orthodoxy. That's not true. Nobody has done anything in the Bible in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We see of no course. evidence and, of that. And that's the other error I forgot to mention. You said it never mentions Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Of course it does. It, Matthew 28, 19, the text we're talking about now, 1 Corinthians 13, 14, Paul says, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship no, of the Holy Spirit be with that. you all. Amen. And that's a benediction, by the way, which Jews 
only pronounced in the name of God. So the apostles are here including within this benediction these three persons. So now no, you have, because, on top of the baptismal formula, which is introductory to Christianity, now you have a benediction being pronounced over people in the name of the triune God. The same thing that the priest did in number six uh, in the name of the Lord. Okay, so I hear what you're saying, but nobody has ever prayed in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Nobody has ever baptized in the name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now, now here's, here's why they haven't. That's, because the Bible says that there, that's listen, not listen, true. Listen, the Bible says that there's no other name whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus. When it, when he spoke about being baptism, you should be, I mean, being baptized, you should be baptized calling on the name of Jesus, meaning that the name of Jesus should be called upon you when we are baptizing you. When, when Peter was in the beginning, when he started the church, he said, you shall be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said, baptized in the name of Jesus. You're saying that he said, baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Here is no, Peter no, no. saying, being baptized you, you confused, in the name you of confused, Jesus. You went back to the original confusion that I, you know, I tried to de demystify it for you by paying careful attention to the nuance of what's going on in these passages. So what was people can go back, talking people about? People can go back and listen to this. And then they'll see what I said. What was Peter talking did. about then? What is Peter what? saying? What was Peter saying? I, I, well, I already explained this. Matthew 28, 19, first of all, Jesus gives the apostles the formula that's to be pronounced over people at the time of baptism. And they never in did. Acts it. chapter 2, Peter is issuing a command to the crowds in the name of Christ for them to be baptized. He's not telling them, this is the formula that's pronounced over you at the time of baptism. You're just confusing things so, that are going but, on but there. You know we have. But, but, but you're mistaken when you say that we don't pray to the various persons of the Godhead. Of course we do. Scripture repeatedly <laughs> speaks of praying to the various members of the Godhead. For example, we pray to the Father. Jesus in Matthew 6 said, pray our Father who art in heaven. In John 14, Jesus said, anything you ask me in my name, that I will do for you. In 1 Timothy 1, Paul said, he was praying in 1 Timothy 1, and he says, I thank Christ Jesus, my Lord. Repeatedly, you have prayers to the members of the Godhead in Scripture. You, you, you're saying that, but Jesus, they asked Jesus, how do we pray? He didn't say pray to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He said, he said, our again, Father which art in heaven. Uh, again, in order to get your doctrine, you're trying to limit what, what Scripture teaches to, to the passage you want at any given time. No, 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 I think quoted about this. not think just this. Matthew 6, no, no, I no. quoted 1 Timothy 1, John 14, 14, which include not only prayers to the Father, but also to the Son. We well, also is, have the repeated uh, order of prayer, which is uh, that we're to pray to the Father through the Son in the Spirit. All persons are involved in prayer in Scripture. Okay, I, what I'm telling you is that when they, his apostles asked him, how do we pray? He said, pray to the Father in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. And then the apostles... Didn't but he didn't even, only say that. No, 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 listen. The apostles had no idea of any trinity, and many would, would you're, argue... You're asserting that contrary to everything no, 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 I'm saying. Proved. No, I'm saying. I've already, least, I've already you admit, proven the trinity on the basis of John 1... On the basis of Genesis no, no. 1, can you admit, on the basis of Psalm 104.30, which I quoted, on the basis of Job 33, on the basis of all the other passages we talked about. You can't can you, take as a given what I've refuted.